Hello, my name is Jean-Marius Kotti and I'm a guest researcher here at the Aalto University in Finland and I'm working in the microfabrication group in the Micronova Research Center. Hello, my name is Ville Matilainen. I work in Lappeenranta University of Technology as a doctoral student uh, in laser materials processing laboratory. My specialty area is additive manufacturing. Hello, my name is Petra Kanninen and I work here in the Aalto University Department of Chemistry and I uh, study fuel cells. Uh, my initial idea was to use laser additive manufacturing and Ville is going to talk about uh, LAM uh, a little bit later. So I thought of uh, using LAM to make microfuel cells because um, we are doing research uh, and this is a field that is still just beginning. So um, there is a lot of uh, prototyping going on. But um, previously microfuel cells uh, have been fabricated using a clean room and microfabrication techniques. So these are some of the microfuel cells that I have done previously in the Micronova clean room. And several articles have been published. These ones are made from silicon, which is a pretty conventional material for microfabrication. Um, however, for fuel cells in general, and uh, as we could see later on, also for microfuel cell, uh, steel is a better material because it's much more robust and it's actually more conductive than silicon. So those are properties that are advantageous. And LAM is a method that allows for quick prototyping. These are the um, LAM manufactured microfuel cells that we have made. So there are three designs. There is this one. This is a one per one by one square centimeter. This one is a two by one square centimeter and this one is four by one square centimeters. As you can see, the flow field is just a, a field of small rectangular pillars. And um, then we measure these microfuel cells in a measurement jig, and these jigs have also been done in a rapid way. They've been 3D printed from ABS plastic, so three, since we had three different sizes of microfuel cells, we also have three different sizes of, of jigs. So. Uh, when Gian Mario presented the idea about uh, making the fuel cells out of additive, with additive manufacturing, of course we were thrilled and excited of trying trying to do it with so and uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about uh, the technique itself. So basically it needs 3D model made out of made with a computer program and uh, the, the 3D model is then prepared for the, for the additive manufacturing machine by, by slicing it into the uh, layer size in our case 20 micrometers and then the parts are built from from the bottom to top, layer by layer. Uh, I have some examples here, for some demo pieces made with uh, additive manufacturing. Uh, for example, here you can see a microheat exchanger with uh, channels that are impossible to manufacture without uh, with any other method than than the additive manufacturing. Then we have here this uh, lattice structure, also impossible to make with any other um, conventional manufacturing te techniques. And since, uh, since the additive manufacturing can produce parts which are hollow, we decided to, to make a hollow nut uh, for, because it's, it's lighter than the one which is totally solid, but it's also quite uh, nice. This is the additive manufacturing machine that we have in Lappeenranta University of Technology. And, and from here we can see uh, the laser beam scanning the, the layer, the geometry of the, of the one layer. 
as it goes over there and soon the recoater will be doing a new new layer of powder which again laser beam is scanning this continues until the part is totally finished Now the recoating is done. And the beam is scanning again the new layer. Here you can see the stainless steel powder material which was used when, when the fuel cells were built. Hello and welcome to the physical chemistry repository where we actually measured these fuel cells that we manufactured. And you might ask what is a fuel cell and why we do it and why in microsize. Here is a sp basic schematics of a fuel cell. Uh, it involves uh, feeding a fuel, hydrogen, methanol, something which, which can be oxidized on the anode and then air or oxygen on the cathode which will then reduce. And, uh, this uh, will produce only water as a product if we use uh, hydrogen as fuel, so it's very clean. And it's also very efficient since we are trans uh, transforming the chemical energy directly to electrical energy without combustion in between. And uh, we want to do this in microsize because uh, we need to power portable devices and we can't use these big clunky systems for that. We need to do things in very small size, which means that uh, things that are inside the fuel cell need to be in micro or even nano sized. The gases that we need in the fuel cells are stored in these uh, bottles where they are fed into the system over here and uh, we control the flow rate with mass flow controllers so you can adjust the rate as you please from very small to very large values. And uh, the fuel cell is controlled by this potentiostat here. So it is a basically a device that can allows you to control the current that goes through the, the fuel cell or the potential that you have in the fuel cell and measure the other, other value. And by this, uh, by this equipment uh, we could measure our uh, steel steel microfuel cells and here you can see a normal polarization curve. So it starts here where you have the open circuit voltage which is close to 1 volt and then when you reduce the voltage you increase the current that is flowing until we hit the maximum, maximum current here at low potentials which is more than 1.2 amperes per square centimeter which is basically the world record of uh, microfuel cells. So I hope uh, we have captured your interest in our research. This research was published in the Journal of Power Sources. You will find the link in the description of this YouTube video. In this article, we describe the methodology, we describe the devices that we have produced, we describe the experiments, and um, we also mention and explain why this technique is really good for fast prototyping. And we publish our really exceptionally good results, which we think are uh, world class or, in fact, uh, record breaking results for microfuel cells.